where we once were. We are no longer a Christian nation. There's been a very serious push from the left saying, let's not over-militarize our cops. Mm -hmm. That should put an end to that discussion right now. We should over-militarize. We should continue to do that. It's not intimidating. People across the globe mourn the victims of the Paris attacks. The leaders of the U.S. and U.K. are using the atrocity as a pretext to launch another offensive on privacy. After the two met together, they have announced that a new global anti-terror policy will be enforced. British Prime Minister David Cameron particularly made clear he wants more legal ways to listen to people's phone calls and monitor internet use. While on a tour of the Department of Homeland Security, U.S. President Barack Obama has unveiled proposals to strengthen cybersecurity laws after recent hacking attacks against Sony Pictures and the federal government itself. Just yesterday, we saw the hack of a military Twitter account and YouTube channel. No military operations were impacted, and it's a reminder that cyber threats are an urgent and growing danger. DARPA has issued a call out to experts who can create the algorithms needed to make these types of vehicles a reality. What if I told you that we now have safe, smart, aware robots that can not only move in two dimensions, but they can move in three dimensions. These drones use the information from real sense to see, think, and adapt. No more collisions. You can see they put down their controls. The drones are adapting to them. With our technology, these intelligent robots open doors that can lead to amazing wonders. When our founders declared a new order of the ages, they were acting on an ancient hope that is meant to be fulfilled. New chapters stand for announcing the birth of, and down the bottom, Novus Ordo Seclorum. And that great seal of the United States has on it, Novus Ordo Seclorum, a new order. And people should be asking the question, what is an Egyptian pyramid doing on the back of an American dollar? What link up is there between America and Egypt? The answer is none at all, except in the field of the occult. And thus we see we're dealing with a Luciferian plan. People need to recognize the God of Freemasonry will lead the world into this peculiar and particular purpose for which America was set up, which is to lead the whole world system into a one world government. The King James, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Notice how the New English Bible renders this verse. It says the old order is gone and a new order has begun. They're using the same language. The King James says, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of the Reformation, talking about Christ's coming, but notice the NIV calls it until the time of the new order. They're preparing people. Now I want you to notice this. In Isaiah 28, 16, in the King James, the Bible says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. This is referring to Jesus, right? And I want you to notice that in the King James, they're telling you that Jesus is the cornerstone of the foundation. Now, where's the foundation in relation to a building? On the top or the bottom? It's on the bottom, isn't it? Okay? So when they say that Jesus is the cornerstone of the foundation, that's down here, right? Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, this is the King James, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Again, on the foundation. Notice that the NIV calls him the capstone. They're saying that that symbol that you see represents Christ. It doesn't. It represents who? Anti-Christ. All the video games out there and countless hours of playing these symbols all over the video game world. 
and even though people recognize what it offers, countless books, countless uh, YouTube videos, one really never questions, yo, you know, where is these symbols coming from? Or what do they mean? And some people just say, oh, it's the Illuminati or et cetera, et cetera. Some people hold blind to the sight, to the fact that these things are all in the music industry, the movies. And no one ever really asked the question, what is the point? Is there an agenda? Now, you look at the average person who plays video games, they're between uh, 16 to 30, mid 30s. Um, a lot of young children don't really go to hardcore until, you know, maybe around middle school, something, something, whatever, but on all on, all on up to their 30s. Uh, you can see the occult symbols all the way back to the times of, uh, of video games when the uh, Legend of Zelda came out. But they are marked. They are marked in every single one of our logos. Modern Warfare 3. Hidden messages behind the stories. Matter of fact, I don't even want to say hidden. Uh, open in plain sight. Um, accepted in the subconscious mind of the gamer. Or the, or the one being entertained by, by it. And this part one was just an eye opener to see um, what's really going on. To get our eyes open and say, hey, this ain't just a coincidence. Some people will say, oh man, you don't know what you're talking about. It's just a, it's just a coincidence. Oh really? No, it, it doesn't. It can't be a coincidence. Come on. It's an Assassin's Creed. What does Assassin's Creed have to do with Legend of Zelda? What does Legend of Zelda have to do with Grand Theft Auto? What does Grand Theft Auto have to do with the Conduit? How are these symbols leaked through all these games? And if all these games have different meanings and stories behind them, 